This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World. Today I'm at Poplar Hall, my home and farm, and I just put in a huge pumpkin patch. It's gonna have some amazing pumpkins in it. If you watch the whole episode today, we have a gift at the end, so stay tuned. So I just installed a brand new pumpkin patch and I cannot wait to plant our pumpkins. Now I've put pumpkins at Poplar Hall many times, but my love of pumpkins has started when I was a little kid watching the Charlie Brown episode. And I have to be honest, although I love pumpkins back then, I really love the idea of, of uh, Snoopy catching the Red Baron. But ultimately, pumpkins are awesome and I love them. I cannot wait to plant them. This year, we've taken a little bit different approach. Normally I love big orange pumpkins that are, that are heirloom pumpkins that can be jack-o'-lanterns. But this year, I found a great website and a great new company by the name of Blue Pumpkin Seed Company. Now they specialize in really interesting European and foreign seeds that I've never seen before. A lot of gray pumpkins, red pumpkins, tan and brown pumpkins that to me are just beautiful and I cannot wait to plant them. When I called them, I ordered some seeds. I just just received them. We're going to plant them today and I'm going to show you how I do it at Poplar Hall. So the, the Poplar Hall pumpkin patch of course is bigger than what you normally would do at home because to me you know getting 20 15 to 20 pumpkins isn't what I'm about it's a go big or go home scenario which I would much rather have 100 pumpkins I can give to my family and friends so that's what we're doing we put it a, a, a large uh, garden devoted solely to pumpkins so each year it will get a little bit bigger but right now it's a nice size pumpkin but we're looking at a mound that I already created but I will show you how to to uh, to build one uh, the mounds about I would say I would say 15 to 20, 20 inches wide. And there's a lot of reasons that you want to do a mound. Um, mound gets the seeds closer to the sun and that warm soil will help germinate the seeds. I learned that from Brian, the owner and operator of uh, Blue Pumpkin. He talked a lot about germination being the king of all of this, is really about how to get those seeds germinated. Another reason why you build a mound is because it protects against weed and, and it keeps the uh, the seeds from sitting in water, which again, if you if you're do it gardening at all, any type of seed sitting in water, it will rot before it germinates. You obviously don't want that. That's a bad thing. So this mound will protect from all of that. The other thing that I wanna talk about when you're making a mound and when you're growing pumpkins, Poplar Hall was a farm. So a lot of this land is untouched. So when I rototilled everything, which is incredibly important, we had a lot of orchard grass, a lot of things in there. They're really tough roots. So I had to run this rototiller probably five to six times just to loosen the soil. That is incredibly important that, that the roots have somewhere to grow. Now pumpkins do not, uh, uh, against what people believe, a lot of people ask me about planting pumpkins in a container. That is actually a no-no. Pumpkins grow laterally. The roots do not grow deep. So if you plant in a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a planter or something along those lines, you're gonna have a problem with them going out and, and the tertiary vines will not be able to go into a ground. That's something to think about and something to, to, to sway away from if you're thinking about having successful pumpkins. So in this soil, there's two important things that I strongly recommend that you do. You wanna have very loose soil, very enriched soil, but you always wanna use some type of compost. The mixture of standard dirt and compost will be a perfect match for vines and, and pumpkin seeds to germinate and grow incredibly well. So when you're doing your mounds, it's important that the vines have a lot of growth potential, which means a lot of extra land. So you don't wanna have your mounds crouching on top of each other. So you wanna go anywhere from six to eight feet away from each other, depending on the breed or species of pumpkin. Put about seven here. So we know that we're gonna have our second mound about right here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna show you exactly how I make my mounds and what I put into them. So we have a nice wheelbarrow full of compost that we've made for years. And we're gonna put it right on the top of what our, our mound will be, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna really use our hoe and we're gonna create a, a mound around this, okay? And that's with the existing soil. Now you could use a mix and just put it on the ground, which is totally fine. Um, a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put 
a piece of cardboard to be a weed preventative and then add the dirt on top. But we should be fine because I'm gonna be using straw as a, as a deterrent to the weeds. You're really looking to mix your existing soil with the compost, and that's incredibly important because germination will take, for, take a lot faster. And I always think when you're gardening, you can use a hoe or a rake or whatever, but there's nothing more important than getting down with the soil and seeing what you're working with. So I'm down here and I get to see what I, what I have, and I already know that I have a lot of old roots, which they will die off, but they are fibrous. We wanna kind of remove them the best that we can. There's a lot of plant matter in this ground anyway. And with the compost, it will be a perfect experience for these seeds. So this is a great mound. We're already ready to plant our pumpkin seeds here. And the one thing that I wanna instruct everyone, and this is coming from the team at Blue Pumpkin, is that normally what you wanna do, and I know this gets crazy, and we're not gonna have to worry about it yet, but we're gonna plant three seeds per mound. Okay, the idea here is that we're really gonna focus on trying to make these great not good. Good is nice, great's better. Great means that you have to be willing to pull a couple sprouts out that aren't performing well. So when the seeds come out of the ground and they're germinating, you're gonna have one come out, you're gonna have two leaves that will form, you're gonna leave them in, Keep, you're gonna water them, but you're gonna have one leader come out of the top. The first seed that does that, that's your strongest seed. That's the one that's gonna be your pumpkin vine. You wanna pull out almost all of them, except you can leave one to two. One is what the directions are, and that's what we're gonna do to make sure that the pumpkins grow large and as the species uh, allotted for. The first seeds that I'm gonna plant into the mounds are called Yokohama pumpkins. Now they're not very big, but I have to be honest, they, they have such a beautiful texture on the outside. They're, I would say about six to eight inches wide, but they have a, like a little bit of a blue gray mixed with a little bit of a tan and a light orange, but it has a really interesting uh, outer flesh color. And it's just, it's really interesting. It's not that super duper waxy, shiny thing that everyone's used to. So. Blue pumpkin uh, gives you a little bag. Uh, it's, it's a minimal amount of seeds because you don't really need that many because they're all interesting different varieties. So you have your Yokohama seeds. Now I have five of them here. I'm gonna put three into each mound. Okay, you want to create a hole with your finger. You wanna go about an inch to inch and a half deep. Put your seed in, cover it, put another hole. Cover it, and lastly, put another hole, seed in, and then cover it. Now, the idea of planting any type of seed, I don't care what it is, it's incredibly important that the seed is, is encompassed in the earth and dirt. That's how germination happens. If there's big air pockets, it's gonna take a lot longer um, until the nutrients get in the water gets there. If you, if you press, not too hard, but you wanna make sure it's firm on both sides, or at least the, the circumference of the seed. Uh, week to 10 to 12 days, you're gonna to start to see three sprouts coming out. And like I said earlier, what's gonna happen is you're gonna to start to see one take over. Once that one takes over, we're gonna leave one to two seeds here that are germinated, and that's gonna be our vine for our Yokohama pumpkins. Okay, so for our next mound, we're gonna replant the Marina de Shogia pumpkin. Now that's another blue variety, which again, blue pumpkin means a great synergy of pumpkins to company. So this is a, 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 a little bit, again, a mid-sized pumpkin. Great flesh, a beautiful species. I cannot wait to plant them. It's really gonna be something that I think is a difference maker when it comes to what types of pumpkins you're planting. So we're gonna keep this all the same. Three seeds per mound. Okay. Inch to inch and a half. These are larger seeds. All right, we're gonna put our name tag on this.
The one thing I'm strongly going to recommend to you besides the use of fertilizers is to take your compost, if you have a lot of it, and do a top dressing of that. Now that's gonna, when it rains and you provide water to the mounds, it's gonna give those roots and those seeds all the nutrients they need to grow incredibly strong. Now when we do our second video so you guys can see how amazing this pumpkin patch is, we're going to be doing something and we're going to be messing with the leaders and that's really, really important. You're going to, when you choose the one seed that germinates incredibly well, that's going to send a leader out the middle. Now it's going to always divide and go to another way, which is totally fine. But when that second leader goes off and one comes from it, that's the ones that you want to cut. Now. Ultimately, everyone's afraid to cut a leader on a pumpkin because you're going to think you're going to miss out on some pumpkins. But what that's going to do is it's going to direct all the nutrients to grow bigger, better pumpkins, which is why we're here, correct? I got to tell you, I'm very excited about this pumpkin patch. We're going to have some really great pumpkins and the fruits of our labor are going to be paying off in the fall. Now I have to tell you, the great folks at Blue Pumpkin Seed have offered you a discount. All you need to do is go to the website and use the code at the bottom of the screen and it will give you a discount on your purchase. If you like what you've seen today, click like and subscribe and like us on Facebook and Instagram. This is Gregory Shelton with Historic Living Modern World reminding you, whenever you do something, always work to move people. Cheers. Cheers.